Hey mamas! So with all this extra time at home with social distancing in effect, Jane, Diane, and I decided to try some activities we found on Pinterest at home with our kiddos. We'll share with you guys if they were a hit or a miss. For my activities with my 15 month old, I decided to do some sensory bags with items I already had lying around the house. We also just moved to this house and have a lot of bubble wrap lying around, so I threw in a bubble wrap one as well to see if she might like that. For the first sensory bag, you'll need a Ziploc bag, peas, and water. For the second bag, you'll need another Ziploc bag with drawing paper and paint and some glitter. And then lastly, bubble wrap and painter's tape. In the bag of paint, non-toxic tempera paint is best, but I use whatever paint I had at home. Some optional items are adding drawing paper just in case you decide to save the art or glitter to give it more pizzazz. When taping up the paint bag, you'll want the middle of the bag around shoulder height. I was most excited about this one, but I think this was actually Zoe's least favorite activity. She didn't really seem drawn to it like she was with the others. However, seeing that she liked to push the tape up against the paint, maybe a spatula or a spreader would have made it more fun. For the bubble wrap, I realized that there's actually a lot of different kinds of bubble wrap and some pop more easily than others. Zoe's pretty lightweight and these bubbles aren't very poppable, so she didn't have much effect when she walked over them. But she did enjoy walking over the peas. I didn't tape it down well enough for that, so I added some more tape. For the bag of peas, you'll want to add just enough water so that when it's laying on a flat surface, the peas float and bounce around a little. Also make sure to take out all the air before closing up the bag. I also moved the peas over to a tabletop to see if she liked that better and she seemed to have more focus there and enjoyed it more. The bag of peas was definitely her favorite and one of the easier ones to prepare, so I'll need to keep that in mind for next time. Hi guys, Diane here. Our family has been in quarantine for a little over two weeks and we're all losing our minds. <laughs> Especially my toddler because he's always asking me to like go somewhere, I wanna see my friends, I wanna go to Disneyland. Park, let's go play games, let's go do this and that and blah blah blah. I have been trying my best to keep him entertained indoors and also to keep my sanity. And I came across this idea on Pinterest called foam painting and Honestly, like that was like that's all I needed to hear because Jax, my toddler who just turned three years old, loves anything foamy and bubbly, and he's also obsessed with paint. All you need is paint. We had washable paint that's made for kids. Um, some paper. You can also use watercolor paper. That's even better if you have it. If not, they won't even know the difference. Who cares? And something to uh, cover the mess underneath that paper. We had a desk that uh, we bought from Ikea. If you don't have a desk, I suggest you using some shower curtains or if not, you can even cut up a, a trash bag and just put it underneath flat. A tray or paper plate or whatever you wanna put the uh, colors in, some water, dish soap, a pump is ideal because it gets the most bubbles out. If you don't have a pump, don't worry. You can just have paint on their hands and give them the water and dish soap mixture. Have them act like they're just washing their hands and bam, they are ready for foam painting. So yeah, let's see how we did it. We started off by having Jax choose the colors he wanted to work with. Okay. I made disposable paint trays by cutting up paper cups. I poured in his colors. Then I added the water and dish soap mixture inside. Give it a good stir. Ta-da! Here's our setup. And let's begin. Okay, some baby papa. Some baby papa. Oops, yeah, definitely need more paints. I like using pumps because it makes any mixture inside extra foamy. And that is the highlight of our activity today. It can and definitely will get messy, so be prepared to clean up afterwards. <laughs> and that face is the reason why I am willing to clean up all this mess afterwards. 
물이 간지러워요? 야! <웃음> He even started getting creative saying it was raining paint. 비가 왔대, 비가. 음, 여기는 비가 없는데요? 여기? 여기 비가 왔죠, 여기. 비가 오던데. So, Jax just ended up pouring the whole paint on the desk and just went at it. Alrighty guys, I hope you guys enjoyed our video. Thanks for watching! Hi guys, it's Jane here. Today I'm going to be doing a science experiment with my two toddlers. Keep in mind that my eldest is four and my middle one is two years old. Um, and I tried to do a project where I can use the resources that I already have at home because I know how difficult it is right now to find anything anywhere. I found two projects um, where you can just use water and Skittles and do fun experiments with them. So for this experiment, you'll need a plate, water, and Skittles. First, I had my kids put the Skittles around the plate. And if you want to take it a step further, you can always have them create a pattern as well. Final step is just putting water inside the plate and just having the kids watch the amazing thing that happens afterwards. And you want to make sure that you put the water in very slowly so that the Skittles don't move around. The kids thought it was the coolest thing ever and they were so amazed by the changing colors. Now if you have some leftover Skittles, there's another science experiment that you can do and the materials that you need are Skittles, water, clear cups, and a stir. The first thing that you want the kids to do is sort the colors and my kids were able to do this independently which was really nice. Then I had the kids place the same number amount of Skittles in each cup. Now, you can take an extra step, and if you do have an older kid, um, have her or him make a prediction. And I asked my daughter, like, what do you predict will happen if you add water into this cup? And her answer was, it'll turn rainbow. Then we added water to each one of the cups, and then I had the kids uh, stir each cup to see what would happen. And as you can see, my daughter's prediction was correct, and it did turn rainbow. Now to add a little bit more fun to the project, um, I wanted to incorporate them learning about their senses. So what I had the kids do was smell each cup and predict what flavor they thought it was going to be. And then I actually had them try it out and see if their prediction was correct. And this was probably by far their favorite part of the experiment. And of course my son was trying to eat the Skittles. And then when my daughter got to the purple one, she predicted that it smelled like children's Tylenol, which is totally correct because it was a great flavor and it smelled just like her Tylenol. Both of my kids loved the experiment and they were engaged the entire time, surprisingly. Um, and now they just ask for new science ex experiments every single day. And I hope you guys really try these experiments out with your kids and please let me know how it goes. Thank you, bye! bye.